Hello everyone! Welcome to another Let's Play of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. My name is Anna Myrtle. Um, today we're going into the trial for the Big Top episode. And I just want a content note for everybody. I've been doing this with each of the videos as we go along. There is a subplot and running gag in some cases because it's also been a source of amusement. Um, we're in a 16 year old girl is being pursued sexually by men who are much older than her. Um, so once again, if that is a hard no trigger for you, I recommend skipping this video and moving on to case uh, number four. Uh, otherwise, uh, feel free to come along with me and we're gonna talk this down. I wanna actually pause here. There we go. Uh, actually, what I really wanna do is Excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm still kind of sick. Um, oh, I didn't know you could just save mid... <sighs> I'm not smart. I didn't know you could save mid-episode. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about how we got here and what I think happened. Um, <clears throat> I want to talk about what we know and what I think we know. And it's always interesting and funny to come back and see how right or wrong I was. So the murder victim in this case is Russell Berry. He's the victim and ringmaster of Berry Big Circus. <clears throat> He's Regina's father. I was musing as I was making dinner tonight uh, how one of the interesting things about the Phoenix Wright series for me is that we don't actually really know the victims more often than not. Um, we don't really know about them as people. Uh, th obviously there's been some, uh, some counter examples where we did, such as in the first game when, when Mia, obviously when she died, we knew her, she was our boss and we loved her, um, respected her very much. But, uh, but here... And, and indeed, in a lot of the cases, we don't actually know the victim. We don't know if they were a good person or a bad person. Um, so far, everyone we, we've talked to has acted like Russell was a good guy. Uh, Mo, the clown, said that uh, Russell would pay him out of his own pocket whenever the circus was doing poorly, um, which seems like a, 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 an upstanding thing to do. Um, but the longer the case goes on and the more we know about him, the more I actually think Russell was possibly a terrible person. Um, and I say that because it, it, it has some bearing on what we know and what we think we know. <clears throat> Years ago, Acro and Bat, real name Ken and Sean, were apparently, um orphaned by way of their parents leaving them and Russell took them in that how that happened was is not clear to me I don't know how old the boys were uh you know maybe they were legal adults um for all we know and and they chose to stay on with Russell and the circus it sounded like they were a lot younger than that like the way I was envisioning it was like very young but I don't actually know. I'll, I'll, I'll admit that. And if they said it, I didn't catch it. So I don't know how old they were. <clears throat> but so Russell took them in. And it sounds like they were a big part of the act and the draw. Uh, from what we know, uh, the circus uh, was Russell as the ringmaster. Regina as the animal tamer, which is a big part of the circus act. Acro and Bat as the aerial stunts, and then Mo and, and possibly some other clowns as the clown, although he's, um, well, and we have Ben as the ventriloquist. <clears throat> Six months ago, an accident occurred in which 
Bat ended up in a coma, and Acro ended up uh, so injured that he he says he cannot even stand up out of his wheelchair. Six months ago, and Russell did not even move Acro to a new room on premises so that he could be down on the first floor instead of being on the third floor of an inaccessible building. He needs help just to leave his room. Acro needs help just to leave his room. <clears throat> now, maybe Mo has some kind of disability we don't know about that means he needs to be on the first floor too. And so Russell didn't feel good um, asking Mo to move. But there had to be some other way to get Acro into an accessible room or to get uh, 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 I can't think of the word, the, an elevator, an elevator installed in the building to get one of those seat things that, that goes, you know, up and down a stair rail. Somehow for Ken to have the accessibility to leave his room without somebody helping him that is utterly infuriating to me <clears throat> so so russell gets no points for that that's bullshit acro and bats injuries were a, probably a pretty big blow to the circus which was already not doing great uh mo has talked about how people don't find his jokes funny anymore um Ben has talked about how his ventriloquist act is boring, creepy, and just very, I would say, a, a very low-level ability of skill. I mean, we can even see his lips moving whenever he talks for the, the, the puppet. So he's not, you know, he's not going on TV or world tour anytime soon. And even if he was, when was the last time you heard of a, a ventriloquist being the draw, the, the big act for a circus? Never. So the, the circus was already probably doing very poorly. And then suddenly they've lost an act that had to be a major part of their floor show. Max gets pulled in at this time and kind of becomes the face of the circus. He was already a, a magician who had won prizes and was very up and coming. Um, so, so he had celebrity draw and celebrity appeal that the circus desperately needed. So Russell signed Max on for uh, a, a, a pretty significant pay if, if Phoenix and Maya's uh, reactions are to be believed. <clears throat> now, that probably pissed Acro off that he and his, his brother is in a coma. He's stuck in his room and here this new by all accounts, difficult person to deal with. I like Max, but I can see how working with Max would be very difficult. Um, so this new difficult person who clearly thinks he's the world um, has just replaced him in Acro. So Acro is probably kind of pissed off about this. Going back six months ago again, what happened was Regina had a lion, an elderly lion, that she had an act with where she would stick her head in the lion's mouth. Bat had a crush on Regina, who is, again, 16 to his 22. And Bat decided he would stick his head in the lion's mouth. My theory is that the lion sneezed because apparently Bat was fond of pranking Regina with pepper in order to make her sneeze, which is a really shitty thing to do. So don't do that. Okay. Um, sneezing is very physically painful for a lot of people. Making somebody sneeze over and over again with pepper is just awful. But apparently Bat thought it was cute. I'm assuming that either Bat had traces of pepper on him that caused the lion to sneeze or the scarf that Acro says Regina gave 
the uh, bat that day that the lion bit him, I'm assuming she put pepper on the scarf to, to tease him and didn't know that he was going to stick his head in the lion's mouth and that the lion was going to sneeze. But that would go towards Acro's belief that Regina murdered his brother. If, if there was prank shenanigans involved. Russell didn't contact the authorities, didn't seek any kind of expert help because he felt like the circus would shut down. So he buried the entire incident, which again, probably pissed Acro off. Here his brother's in a coma and Russell's concerns were for the circus. Um, so Russell buried the incident and killed the lion with a rifle. Um, both of these things probably severely impacted Regina, uh, seeing a guy that she probably thought of as like a big brother, seeing a guy that supposedly had, uh, or he was asking her out on a date and had a crush on her, seeing him go into a coma and being attacked by her precious lion. And, you know, I'm sure there's probably some guilt in the sense of it was my fault or that should have been me. And then seeing her lion killed, Regina cannot have had a good time of that. Um, and we don't see any evidence that Russell did anything to try to make things easier for her. Um, so fast forward six months later, a guy who is 31 is creeping on his daughter, uh, telling her that he's in love with her, asking her to marry him, um, giving her poetry about wanting her lips on him. And yeah, it's all through his puppet. I don't care. That doesn't make it less creepy. That makes it, in my opinion, actually more creepy. Um, Russell not only doesn't fire this guy, he actually keeps him on in a capacity where this guy has access to a steady stream day in and day out of anonymous children that he could potentially abuse. That's further points against Russell as a decent person. And his headliner, his shiny headliner, is coming to him asking if he can marry Regina, which I'm not a big fan of. Again, the age gap is pretty big. Uh, but we're in so deep at this point with a 31-year-old and a 22-year-old trying to date her that it's like, I'm actually forced to be like, well, I guess at least he's only 21. And at least instead of trying to uh, pressure her into dates or, or pressure her into physical contact, all he did so far was apparently he verbally told her that he was in love with her and that he wanted to marry her. And then he went to her father and told her him the same thing. And I'm not actually in favor of any of that, but it's better than what everyone else has been doing. So yay. But so anyway, so Russell actually, I give him a human being score of not great in my opinion. We go back to Acro. I genuinely believe that Acro blamed Regina for his brother's death. Um, again, I cannot think that he genuinely thought she planned his murder. So he has to think it was a prank gone wrong that I guess she was insufficiently sad about. And maybe we're supposed to think that too. But honestly, she reads to me, well... She reads to me like a misogynistic uh, cipher where the, the she's just vacuous and, and silly. And we're supposed to be like, oh, girls, they're so different from us. They're practically another species. But if we set that aside and try to take her seriously, she reads to me like someone who has been so deeply traumatized that she's just had to bury all of it and put on this facade of... And I mean, she, she lives as an entertainer. Her entire life has been, the show must go on night after night. No matter how bad things are, you must smile for the audience. So I can, I can kind of fanfic in my head a, a version where Regina works. And it's not that she's vacuous because of a 
bad portrayal of a female character. It's that she's so traumatized, but so determined to keep up a good face for the audience that she's just buried everything just miles below the surface and everyone seriously needs therapy, but she especially needs and deserves therapy because she's got a lot to work through. But so Acro, I guess, blames her for Bats uh, going into a coma. I keep saying his death. He's not dead. He's in a coma. Um, and I guess for being insufficiently sad about it, despite the fact that this is a traumatized girl 10 years his junior, he and didn't confront her. Apparently, he put a note in her pocket calling her a murderer and saying to come to just below his rooms at 10 p.m. that night. She didn't understand the note and was like, well, I'm not a murderer. It must be addressed to somebody else. Stuck it on a bulletin board and her dad found it and he went to the plaza at 10 at night. Whereupon, it is my belief that Acro flung Max's bust out of the window. Okay. Without looking who he was flinging it at, flung it at whoever showed up, and killed the guy that had been like an adoptive father to him. I don't think he planned to kill Russell. I think he planned to kill Regina. And just because, and I think it would actually make sense if he planned to kill Russell. I, I, I actually think killing Russell would make more sense than killing Regina. Because I think Russell is way more to blame for what happened to Bat. And to what happened to Acro after what happened to Bat. I think Russell's way more to blame than the Regina is. But Russell's not the one who got the uh, the note stuck in his pocket. Regina got the note stuck in her pocket. And I don't think Acro could have anticipated that she would take the note out of her pocket, stick it on a bulletin board, and her father would pick it up. So it actually kind of is frustrating me. Because if Acro had killed Russell, I'd be like, yeah, okay. I mean, murder's bad, but I get it. But instead he tried to kill someone who he, he knows, must know didn't actually intend for his brother to die and she's just a kid she doesn't so anyway and if, if anyone else had been walking by it could have been a complete stranger they'd be dead too because acro didn't actually look before he aimed it's interesting to me that he threw max's bust which he probably couldn't have genuinely believed he could frame max that way so I'm assuming he threw Max's bust more out of resentment than anything else. He had plenty of gym equipment. He could have thrown a barbell or something, but he threw Max's bust probably because he's angry that Max replaced him, which I can, you know, I understand. I don't approve. I get it. Um, still wrong. Still bad. And I suspect that framing Max was just a happy accident that Acro's been happy to go along with. Either, again, because he's upset that Max replaced him, or perhaps he knows that Regina has a crush on Max now, and he thinks this is the best way he has to still hurt her. Those are That's all I got, really, as far as why he's willing to frame an innocent man. Um... I absolutely hope that the game doesn't try to make us think that we should be sympathetic to this. Um, just because his brother's in a coma and he's disabled. Like, bitch, I'm disabled. I don't go around murdering innocent girls who are freaking children. I mean, 10 years younger than you, dude. And, 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 like, what? <sighs> yeah, not happy. Not happy. So, I think we're just going to have to now drill down and prove all this. Um, obviously, he's been brought in as Von Karma's witness to try to implicate Max further. I assume he's going to say that he saw Max fly um, up past his bedroom window. Which doesn't make any sense because Max can't fly. Um... So obviously he's lying, and in any competent court of law, that would be proof right there that something weird was going on. But it's not a competent court of law. It's, you know, this one. So that's what I think is going to happen. But again, I do think it's worth pointing out that Russell Berry, apparently a terrible person. I mean, even, even if we set the fathering stuff aside, which I have a lot of issues about, the fact that he covered up Bat's accident 
has continued to employ Ben and uh, didn't do anything to make Acro's rooms accessible. Terrible. Oh, and that was the other thing. So, so Russell finds a note accusing his daughter of being a murderer, and he knows who it's from because he was going with the with the pepper. I, I'm assuming to explain the pepper. That's what I'm guessing. Um, and he tells Max, "I'll be like, like, like." The, the boy that I can... He doesn't tell Max all this, of course, but but he's, his thought process was, the boy that I have raised is my own, that I consider my son, who's disabled now because of a tragic accident, and his brother has, has, has is in a coma, and it's horrible for him. He is hurting and thinks that my own daughter is a murderer. I'll be back in ten minutes. It won't take more than ten minutes for me to explain this to him. Like, what the heck? That is the point where you say, Max, I appreciate that you want to talk to me about something, but I have to go deal with this and I won't be available. I, you know, clear my schedule. I won't be available for the next, you know, eight hours. You know, the boy needs an explanation. He needs time to grieve. He doesn't just need 10 minutes of, oh, hi, I heard you heard, I heard you thought Regina was a murderer. It was totally an accident. Oh, an accident. Oh, okay, cool, man. All right, sorry. Okay, I gotta get back to something. Okay, great, great, great. see you later. You know, like, that's, how did he think this was gonna go? But okay. Good morning, Max. Oh, yeah. Good morning, sweeties. I still like Max best. You don't seem like your usual sparkling self today. I'm always like this before I go in front of an audience. I'm working up to it. Someone's teeheeing. Oh, it's Regina. Don't get nervous, Maxie. Here, have a glass of milk. Oh, she knows he likes to drink milk before performance. Regina! How fabulous! My sweetie pie! My sweetie pie princess! You came to watch my performance today? Of course I did! Mo told me that I should come and watch this. Mo said that? So, what kind of performance will you put on today? Let me guess, you'll fly at the end? Uh... It's not that kind of show. Is that right, my sweeties? Huh? I think my sweetie pie princess doesn't... Yeah, she doesn't seem to realize what's going on. Or even where she is. Hmm. Well, Max, it looks like it's time to raise the curtain. I'll see you later. Today, I'm just a member of the audience. Fabulous. Enjoy yourself out there. Good luck, Max. You're the best. And I will give Max just the tiniest bit of credit that he at least seems to be realizing through this conversation that... Maybe this girl needs help or therapy or something other than for for you to be all I love you, darling, at her. Regina's different, don't you think, Nick? Well yeah, she's had like 18 massive tragedies and needs you know, deserves therapy. Like everyone needs therapy in my opinion. I need therapy. There's there's nothing stigma intended in saying she needs therapy, but she needs therapy. Top of the morning to you! Everybody, let's get stuck in legal limbo! How low can you go? I don't know, Mo, how low can you go? Top of the morning to you, Governor! Top of the morning. That's the ticket! Attacking the day starts with energy in the morning. The early bird gets the worm. But then again, worms lack higher brain function. Here, Max, I brought you a present. Have some milk. Oh my! Thanks! They're actually being nice to him. How are you today, right? Well, I've got the feeling that today I'm going to face off against the real culprit. You mean Acro? Huh? You think he did it? Be careful. He's used to putting his life on the line. Literally. He's got guts to spare. If all I've got to worry about is how thin the tightrope is, I'm used to that already. It just means I won't be able to press him like I can other witnesses. What are you going to do then, Nick? Today we'll just have to do without our usual psychological warfare. 
Today, we rely on evidence. It's the only way we'll get past Acro and to the truth. You're right, but it's gonna be tough! Anyways, I want you to see that... I want you to make sure that Regina sees it all today. It's important. Why? Then she'll finally have to deal with the reality of what happened to her father. You're not a professional. I don't really trust your opinion on how to help this girl's psychological state. You want us to make sure Regina watches? Yes. That's why I brought her here to court today. What's that supposed to mean? She needs to know that when people die, they don't just become stars. Again, I really feel like this should be in the hands of a therapist, not a clown. I may be an old-fashioned clown, but I don't believe in people becoming stars. Lottie, yeah. I don't care about your opinion, kiddo. You lie under oath. Court is now in session for the trial of Maximilian Galactica. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Very well. Ms. Von Karma, you may proceed with your case. The prosecution would like to revise its previous theory of events. What's the meaning of this? We have discovered a new witness, or shall I say, a new eyewitness. One that saw Maximilian Galactica fly off from the scene of the crime. Order. Order! Well, I had a feeling something like this would come up. Due to this revision, we are now prepared to explain how the defendant flew that night. An explanation the prosecution will present if the need so arises. I think it has arisen now! In fact, my detective stayed up all night creating a mock-up of the scene on my orders. Oh, hold on. Yeah, I know I need to take my meds. Snooze for me, won't you please? Thank you. Here comes you. Very well, please call your witness to the stand. Time to get to work. Or shall I say, time to walk the courtroom tightrope. I am really uncomfortable by the, um, Native American appropriation going on in his costume. Unless he's actually supposed to be Native American, but this was set in Japan, so... And he's working at a circus, so I think it's just supposed to be a costume. Name and occupation. Ken Dingley. But everyone calls me Acro. I have brought my birds with me today, apparently. I'm employed as an acrobat at the Berry Big Circus. Where were you the night of the crime? I was in my room that night. If you look at the map... Oh, sorry. If you look at the map, you will see that the witness's room is near the crime scene. My room is on the third floor. The crime scene is below my window. Hmm. The night of the crime, the witness saw something quite shocking. Would you tell us what you witnessed? Okay. It was just after 10 p.m., and I was resting in my bed. Around that time, I heard a large thump noise from outside the window. Then, a few moments later, I saw someone flying right by my window. It was Max Galactica. I only saw him from behind, but that's who it looked like. Where is his wheelchair in that picture? I would have expected it to be closer to his bed, but I didn't even see it. Did they forget to draw it? To be honest, when I saw that, I thought I was dreaming. This witness testimony matches up exactly with that of the clown. If that's the case, there is very little the prosecution need add. All that's left is to explain how the defendant disappeared into the sky that night. Before we get that far, I'd like to cross-examine the witness. A foolish choice by a foolish fool who wishes to feel the foolish sadness of a sad fool. A man must know the proper timing for things, Phoenix Wright. 
just like your old friend, Mr. Miles Edgeworth did. Mr. Wright, do you have a problem with the witness's testimony? Okay, she clearly knows that we have a thing with Miles because she's using him to try to unsettle us, and it worked. In the words of Miss Von Karma, may I quote yesterday's proceedings? There's no way that actually happened. Very well, you may proceed with your cross-examination. Okay, they acted like we needed to be careful about pressing again, which I don't like. It was just after 10. <laughs> okay, I do like how the birds come closer to him when he gets sad. Like, hold on, watch. <laughs> one of them jumps up his shoulder to look at him, and the other one jumps on his head to bend down and look at him. Are you okay? Are you okay? I only saw him from behind. Okay, so what does that mean? The light in your room was turned off then, right? That's true. I was going to bed after all. So with the lights off, you were still able to clearly see a human fly by your window? The safety lights lit things up enough for me to see. But honestly, there was only enough light for me to see the silhouette outside my window. It was the person's back, so I couldn't see the white roses on the front. Did you see any of the other symbols? I clearly saw the silk hat, as well as the cloak wrapped around his body. I'm convinced that the person I saw was Max Galactica. The more I press him, the less results I seem to get. Well, I found something. There is a huge contradiction with the testimony that was just given. If there's a contradiction, prove it with evidence. She's right. Let's see some evidence. Cat! You claim to have seen the exact same thing Mo saw that night. Do you stand by that? What do you mean? The silk hat. What about the silk hat? I saw it on Max's head as he flew by my window. Well, you should have tried looking down out of your window that night. That would have been quite difficult, considering the state I'm in. Just looking outside of the window was a tough enough challenge for me. But that's a shame, because you would have noticed the silk hat found on the scene. That... that's the ringmaster's hat, right? Afraid not. No matter how you look at it, this is Max's silk hat. Where are you going with this, Mr. Wright? Are you saying that Max has two silk hats? No. This is handmade. A one-of-a-kind model made only for Maximilian Galactica. Which means acro. You've been fibbing on the stand. Order! Order! As always, it looks like someone just had to open their mouth before thinking. Are you okay, Nick? Well, I opened my big mouth and now I have to back it up. How about it, Mr. Wright? What would cause this witness to commit perjury in this court today? Am I allowed to say I think he's really the murderer? Because I do. Your Honor, on this occasion, the defense accuses Acro himself. On this occasion? Accuses Acro? What in the world are you accusing him of? Obviously, we accuse him of the murder of Mr. Russell Berry. You'd think the judge would notice this pattern by now. Mr. Wright, are you serious? Deadly serious, your honor. <laughs> I think your trips to the circus have served you well. You seem to have learned how to try and grab it in audiences' hearts and minds. Your honor. Don't allow yourself to be swayed by theatrics. Trying to wow the crowd with smoke and mirrors is the oldest bluff in the book. Really? If you don't believe me, just look at the witness! He's calm enough for it to be almost scary! So he's a Disney princess, so what? He is staying calm and collected. <laughs> oh, I mean, we're trying to peck at our face! 
Mr. Dingling, do you have any response to the defense's accusations? I don't really need to say a thing, do I? What do you mean? Everyone, take a good look at me. Again, you're disabled. So am I. That doesn't mean that we can't kill people. I can't even stand up by myself, let alone leave the lodging house. Oh, I don't like him using this as an excuse. That makes me very uncomfortable. I use a wheelchair. At, 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 well, I use motorized scooters. At, 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 at stores, and I, I have used wheelchairs to get around, like, museums and stuff. I don't own a wheelchair, but I, I am a wheelchair user. And and to just sit there and say, oh yeah, people in wheelchairs can't murder, didn't, didn't you hear? Like, very uncomfortable with that. I mean, he's lying, so I guess there's that. That's true. I understand that Mr. Wright is just trying to help his client. But you do this by accusing me of a murder of all things. Oh, shut up! See? Even a sliver of common sense makes it clear the accusation is ludicrous. She's right! Way to pick on a disabled man, you heartless, cruel man! Phoenix is a poopy head! That was not me, that was... See that, Mr. Phoenix Wright? If you're trying to drum up support from the peanut gallery, that's how you do it. Uh-huh. I think that's enough of this little game. I've got a doctor's note to confirm that Akru is unable to stand under his own power. Maybe the defense is planning on making a claim to counter this as well? I can hear the defense now! Akru had an accomplice! What do you say about this, Mr. Wright? Did Akru have an accomplice? No. Now then, this must be when we get to hear the name of the mystery accomplice. Not this time, Von Karma. What? You're not going to sucker me into this one. What are you blubbering about, Mr. Wright? There was no accomplice. Akro planned and committed this murder all by himself. Order! Order! What are you getting at? We to keep them on their toes, Nick! Now I'm going to have to prove how it all fits together. I had to show how Acro murdered Russell Berry. Can you do it, Nick? I know what I can't do. I can't stop now. If I stop attacking, I'm doomed. Alright! Then let's do it! Mr. Phoenix Wright. If this witness is the killer, then his eyewitness account is all lies, right? Mr. Wright, I'd like you to clear up something for me. When the crime was committed, exactly where was Mr. Dingling? He was in his room. Take that! He was obviously here the entire time. That's Akro's room? Pretty simple, hey? Akro wasn't able to leave the lodging house by himself. In that case, there can only be one correct answer. Akro didn't leave his room to kill the ringmaster. What? Are you nuts? What say you, Mr. Dingaling? It's an interesting theory. That's it. Considering that what you propose is impossible, yes, that's it. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. As the witness has stated, your assertion is impossible. As he is in a wheelchair, there is no way he could go to the scene or be the killer. He had ropes in his room. He could have... I mean, I don't think this is what happened, but he could have lowered himself down. You've got a point. It seems you've forgotten once again, Mr. Phoenix Wright. The defendant was clearly spotted at the scene of the crime. That's true. I'm getting there. Mo said he saw Max, didn't he? But Maya, it's still impossible for humans to fly. Do you mind if I ask a question, Mr. Wright? What is it? I understand some of your logic. However, how do you think that I killed him? If I can't leave my room, I couldn't wear Max's costume. That's the next course of this legal buffet. Be careful, Nick, if you mess up here. 
I'm sure that Akro killed the ringmaster, and he did it while he was in his room. No doubt about it. Time to enlighten us as to how Mr. Dingling committed the crime, Mr. Wright. I'm going to present some evidence. What did Mr. Dingling use to commit the crime of murder against Russell Berry? There it is. And we still don't know where it is. What's that? A picture? It is indeed. The problem is with the item that's shown in the picture. The bust? It's quite a large bust. And because it is life-size, it is also very, very heavy. Heavy? Heavy enough to guarantee a certain death. Especially if it was dropped from a third-story window. Ah! When he's angry, the birds fly away. This is how Acro was able to kill the Ringmaster, with the force of gravity and Maximilian Galactica's ample bust. <laughs> Order! You're saying the bust fell onto the Ringmaster? A rather simple crime. Even if you were stuck in a wheelchair, it would be incredibly easy to commit. Objection! Phoenix, Phoenix, we're not stuck in wheelchairs. Wheelchairs are accessibility tools. They are good things. How could you possibly wheel a wheelchair with something so heavy? It's impossible! Francisca, wheelchairs can actually wheel quite a lot of weight. Objection. You guys really need some courses on, like, disability awareness. Acro is an acrobat! He should have more than enough upper body strength to carry something like the bust. Mr. Dingling, how do you respond to these charges? Well... Akra's at a loss for words! He should be. He knows I'm getting close to the truth. Well, Akro, you can't run away from things this time- Ow! I'd watch what I say if I were you, Mr. Phoenix Fright. What? Your honor, the physical health of the witness is material to this case. I demand we get proper testimony from the witness himself. Testimony, you said. On karma. She's just using this testimony as a, rouse to s as a ruse to stall for time. Objection! There is absolutely no need for such testimony. The defense has its version of the murder. The prosecution has the right to respond. The defense's objection is overruled. Why can't he see things my way once in a while? Mr. Dingling, I'm sorry, but we do need you to testify about your physical condition. If you have any doubts about your ability to testify, we can request expert testimony. The witness will have no problems. However, let's all be respectful towards him. Thank you. <clears throat> that woman will sink to any low to win a case. I suppose I could have lifted something the size of that bust. I have strong upper body from working as an acrobat, and only my legs were injured. However, lifting the bust and looking out of the window would have been impossible. There's no way I could have exerted that kind of force on my lower body. Why couldn't you just pull yourself into your wheelchair, wheel over to the window, and... Why are they acting like the only way- Oh, they kept his wheelchair downstairs. Jesus fucking Christ, are you serious? They didn't even let him have his wheelchair in his room. I am so angry at Russell right now. So that was why he couldn't look out. Well, this is why you come up with a better way to murder someone than come up with a way that could potentially kill an innocent person. That makes it impossible for me to have known the location of the ringmaster's head. It would be unrealistic for me to drop the bust on him, don't you think? I have no doubts in regards to this witness's testimony. It was impossible for him to lift the bust and stick himself out far enough to look. Not to mention, he could not have known the location of the ringmaster's head. A single false step would have led to even more severe injuries. That's what I was thinking. What is your opinion on the matter, Mr. Wright? I'd still like to proceed with my cross-examination. He's simply stalling. It's shameful, really. <sighs> 
Okay. I get why he couldn't look out the window if he didn't have his wheelchair in the room. didn't have his wheelchair in the room, then he could say, show up at 10 o'clock, murderer, and he wouldn't know where their head was. That's the part that it makes it impossible for me to have known the location of the ringmaster's head. That's the part that's gotta be wrong. Or gotta be a lie. I, I have to... It's got, it's something. It's one of these things. You haven't forgotten what happened six months ago, have you? I have conclusive evidence of what took place. <sighs> what was his plan? He put that in Regina's pocket. He didn't want to talk to her directly because he didn't want her to know that the person who would be meeting her was him. He wanted her to be afraid it could be anybody. I have conclusive evidence. He had a scarf. So how did he see this coming down? And what actually happened? So... Russell saw the note and said I'll be back in 10 minutes Max I have to go talk to somebody he didn't maybe even didn't know it was Acro although honestly who else would it be but didn't know it was Acro he was gonna go meet whoever it was and talk to them about their evidence and he was gonna say no but actually it was an accident look here's some Pepper to prove it? That he carried in a box. A big heavy box. Why would he... Why wouldn't he just put Pepper in his pocket? Why would he take it at all? You'd think you could say it was a Pepper prank without needing a freaking show and tell. This Pepper, as you can see. If I snort some, I sneeze, you see? Ha <laughs> ha! What if Russell didn't bring the pepper? The only other person that would know about the pepper, well, besides Regina, is Acro. Acro's been obsessing about this for months. He's, he's obsessed. He's willing to kill over it. So did he put the pepper in the box? It was locked. So he put the pepper in the box. It was supposed to be like a calling card for the murder? Like, they were going to find the body and this box and in it, pepper! And only he would know. He would know what it meant. Heavy bombs. Was that it? The box was supposed to mark the spot where the murder would stand, where Regina would stand. She'd be struggling to pick it up and, and maybe even you know make a noise like, "Ah, oh, this is heavy, or I need help," and that's how you'd be able to triangulate, maybe. Yeah, that's the only thing I can think. It's, it's kind of far-fetched, but how else did it show up there? That's what we're going with. 
Scarecrow. <gasps> I think this is right. You didn't really need to lean out of the window, did you? What are you driving at, Mr. Wright? You already knew ahead of time where the ringmaster's head was going to be. Quite precisely, I may add. Objection! Your silly hinting at things is pointless, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Enough stalling! How about you show us some evidence? I did such a good job hinting. Yes, yes, hurry up and explain things, Mr. Wright. Maybe you should take a look at this. The key point here is the wooden box. The same wooden box the victim was found hunched over? The same. The question is, who placed the wooden box here? Who? When Ben and company saw the ringmaster, they didn't see him holding the box. Oh, that's a good point. Which means, this wooden box was already placed at the scene of the crime. I have to admit, your theory makes a lot of sense. The moment the bust came falling down was exactly the same moment that the ringmaster lifted up this wooden box. Which means that the answer to all these questions is now crystal clear. You... you mean... If the bust were to fall upon the point marked out by the wooden box, there would be no way it could miss the head of the victim. No! Order! This is unbelievable! Finally, some of these loose ends are starting to tie themselves up. Now I just gotta keep going, and there's only one way to go from here, forward. The next question I have is, who placed that wooden box at the scene? It was Mr. Dingling, of course. He connected it to a rope, then all he had to do was lower it down. Ow! Allow me to whip some sense into you, Mr. Phoenix Wright! Oh, Jesus! The ringmaster's head could have been anywhere when he lifted the box! That's why the box was specially made! Specially made? Indeed! It had the most peculiar feature! Wait... The box has a remarkable weight! Wait? According to the court record, it weighs 20 pounds. Just to lift this wooden box would have required... Oh, I see! One would have to squat down, then lift with their body, wouldn't you say? That's exactly what I was trying to point out. The box is also very large. The box also has handles on either side, doesn't it? That is correct. To lift the box, you would have to squat down. Which means... No matter who you are, your head would be approximately the same place. Fool! Does he even bother to listen to me anymore? I've heard what you have to say. I must admit, I'm shocked at your imaginative skills. You... did you do it? Did you place this wooden box in the plaza? Mr. Wright may have a vivid imagination, but I could never have done what he's proposing. What? Mr. Wright, do you recall the original location of Max's bust? Of course I remember. It was on the top of the table in the cafeteria. What happened to it? I'd like you to remember one important fact, Mr. Wright. I could not possibly leave the lodging house by myself. That means... You understand what I mean, don't you? I may very well have been able to drop the bus from my room. But how would I have gotten the bus from the cafeteria to my room? You see, Mr. Phoenix Wright, explain that. Don't forget, you said there was no accomplice. Tell us exactly how the witness would have carried the bus from the cafeteria. We have a problem here, but this is no place to get perplexed. All right, Mr. Wright, let's hear your explanation. How did the witness get the bus from the cafeteria back to his room? Is 
It's shiny. It's very shiny. Maybe a monkey? A monkey? Everyone knows money. He loves shiny objects of any size. Oh, like when he stole the ventriloquist's ring. Are you saying the witness had a monkey steal the bust? Of course he didn't order the monkey to steal it. The monkey stole it on his own and brought it back home. Home? Money lives in Acro's room. Acro's room? Objection! But the bust was bronze, wasn't it? Bronze isn't all that shiny. Objection! Maybe you should put the whip down sometime and read the court record. My, those are some very nice cards he's holding. Yes, and they are made of platinum, which is very shiny. Ah! Uh. Acro. Money is a strong monkey, right? It'd be easy for him to bring the bus back to your room. If he wasn't able to handle that himself, I'd be in the market for a new roommate. Really? That's... okay. Order! I said order! Ms. Von Karma! Where is the bust in question at this moment? Uh... I... don't know. We're searching for it as we speak. This is a rather strange turn of events. But let's say that the monkey had not stolen the bust. What would have happened then? Well, in that event... Something else would have been used as the murder weapon. Wait! Then you mean this bust was the murder weapon by accident? It's possible. Maybe Acro saw Money's mountain of stolen goods and thought to use one of them. Anyways, I think we've more than proven one critical fact. Namely, that it was entirely possible Acro was the murderer. Moron! Mr. Wright's argument was so circular, I'm still a bit dizzy. However, his argument does hold water. There's no denying that. Ow! Don't seem so flamboozled, especially by this fraud of an attorney. Fraud? You've forgotten the absolute most important thing, Mr. Phoenix Wright. And what is that? You should know! You forgot your fraud of a magical client was spotted at the scene of the crime! There is no reason to doubt the clown's testimony. That's true. How do you respond to that, Mr. Wright? Nick, don't let her beat you now! I won't. This is my chance to turn the trial around. When the murder occurred, there were two people at the scene of the crime. One was the victim, Russell Berry, and the other was the murderer himself. Answer this and only this, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Who was the murderer the clown saw? Well, it was... It was the bust. Take that! He saw Max's butt. How? I asked who was the other person Mo saw on the scene. That evidence has nothing to do with the question. Objection! Au contraire, mon frere! It does indeed have something to do with the question. Mo said he saw Max's silhouette. But he did not actually see the man himself. It wasn't a human being he saw. How is that possible? It's simple, really. What Mo actually saw that night was Max's bust. What are you talking about? Have you tried using your brain at all in this case? The silhouette he saw was wearing a cloak. There's no reason why you couldn't attach a cloak to the bust. It would be easy to hang one off of the cards in the bust's hands. Idiot! Who in their right mind would put a cloak on a bust? It doesn't matter who put it on the bust. Just wait a minute now, Mr. Wright. Who put the cloak on the bust? That question is of the utmost importance to this case, don't you agree? He caught me. So let's have it. Who put the cloak on the bust? I think it was an accident, so I guess you put the victim. Take that! Fool! Him? You were saying it was the victim himself. Russell Berry? That's what I'm saying. He! The victim!
Ivan himself. Place the cloak on the bust. Place the cloak isn't the right way of putting it. What would be the right way of putting it, Mr. Wright? Explain yourself! Nick, do you really have a handle on all of this? I'm fine, Maya. I'm putting the pieces together. There's really only one picture I can paint anyways. You want to know what really happened that night. Let's step back in time. Acro used a rope to lower the wooden box onto the seat. Then he attached that rope to the bust and dangled the bust out of his bedroom window, directly above the wooden box. At the same time, the ringmaster told Max to wait in his room and went to the scene. At that time, the ringmaster was wearing Max's costume. Perhaps he didn't want anyone to recognize him that night. But just as he feared, he was spotted at the entrance of the lodging house. By none other than a ventriloquist and his puppet, Ben and Trillo. When the ringmaster arrived at the sea, he bent over to lift the wooden box. And that's when Acro took his chance and released the rope. Well, now he is in his chair! I thought he was sitting on the floor and couldn't see out the window because he didn't have a chair. But if his chair was in his room, then it makes no sense why he couldn't look out. I don't know. But that's clearly a chair. I can see the handles. This is when the magic happens. At the very instant, the bust hit the victim. You wait just a second there, Mr. Phoenix Wright! As much as you try, as much as you scheme, this just isn't true! It can't be! It's still a little early to be getting so upset, Ms. Von Karma. The circus isn't over yet. What? So that's why Trillo and Ben saw the rose, but Mo didn't. The impact of the bust on the victim threw the cloak up, which snagged onto the bust. The impact also called the sound a certain witness heard, prompting him to take a look. That witness was, of course, Lawrence Mo curls the crown. When Mo looked out his window, the cloak had already snagged onto the bust. Having completed the crime, Arrow naturally went about pulling up the murder weapon. He had no idea Mo saw the bust being raised with the cloak dangling on it, primarily because in his wheelchair he couldn't see out of his window. So he just kept pulling the bust up. That is how the magical murderer disappearing into the sky came to be. So you see, the only person who could have pulled this off is the one person who was able to drop the murder weapon from above the crime scene. Acro, it could only have been you. Acro's been playing mind games with all of us. He sure has. But he has come to the end of his rope now. So? What now? You've graced us with a rather long-winded tale. But do you have any evidence to prove that your fairy tale is true? Okay, again, I don't have to prove it's true. I just have to present a reasonable alternate interpretation of the crime. Evidence? In this court, only two things matter. The power of evidence and the power of my whip. Why have we not taken that away from her? Don't forget the power of my gavel as well. Mr. Wright, the prosecution brings up a point. Can we see some evidence? Nick, they say they want evidence! I just explained how there can only be one possible murder method. But there is still something unusual about Mo's eyewitness account. Unusual? A contradiction, actually. Okay then, use that and get out of this jam! That's enough talking amongst yourself. Proceed, Mr. Wright. Present some evidence to the court that backs your claims. 
I want hard proof that you have unraveled the trick to this magic case. I think it's the the roses. I'll I'll try the poster. The problem with Max's is Max's three symbols. The silk hat, the cloak, and the white roses. Those symbols were a problem numerous times during yesterday's proceedings. Yesterday, there were two contradictions in Mo's testimony. The silk hat was one, the white roses were the other. Oh yeah, the other contradiction was how a silk cat could rise up if it was if it was left behind on the ground. The theory I just presented explains all those contradictions. You fool! Do you ever shut up? Max's silk cat was found at the scene of the crime. However, remember what Mo said yesterday. He testified that the criminal he saw fleeing the scene was wearing the silk cat. There was only one explanation for that. The silk hat that Mo saw was actually the bust. Okay. Yeah, the... Yeah. Makes sense. If you look at it that way, he did see the silk hat, sort of. Fine, you've got one. But what about the other contradiction? The other contradiction? Remember what that ventriloquist said in court. He said he witnessed white roses on Max's chest that night. But the clown's testimony doesn't match. The clown said there were no white roses. I'd like to see you try and explain that one away. Of course, I can explain all of it. What was that? Please recall the instant when the cloak snagged onto the bust. If the cloak snagged onto the bust, what happened to the white roses? Do you get it? If the cloak got snagged onto the front of the bust, it means that the white roses would end up on the back of the bust. Which explains why Mo didn't see them. The white roses were not visible because they were on the back side of the bust. Well, actually, they were behind the hands, but whatever. Order! This is quite a shocking state of affairs. Mr. Wright's theory still sounds a bit absurd to me. However, let's keep going down this road for a while and see where it leads. Let's do this, Nick! Then maybe Von Karma will throw in the towel! Yes, Disney Princess, we get it. Mr. Wright, do you mind? What is it? You took the time to research our circus, didn't you? Well, yes I did. Is there something making you think I didn't? If you did, maybe you'll understand why I think you're off track. Why is that? Motive. This witness feels an incredible debt of gratitude toward the ringmaster. Anyone with any relation to the circus is well aware of this. Well, lucky for you, he didn't know it was the ringmaster he was killing, so... Thus, there is absolutely no way someone like this would kill the ringmaster. Hmm. Your Honor, I'd like you to hear Akro's story. Learn about his relationship with the ringmaster and his life up until now. What do we do? There's no doubting that Acro deeply respected the Ringmaster are literally all of you forgetting that he didn't know who it was. It seems this case isn't over yet. However, I feel this is a good place to take a break. No, I can clear this up in two seconds! I will listen to the rest of Mr. Diggling's testimony after recess. The court will now take a ten minute recess. No! No! He clearly said he couldn't see who it was. We know it was... Ah, fine. Okay. Well, I guess we'll have to finish this in the next episode. Um, unless we can do it quickly. 
I have no idea how long it'll take. I'll, I'll just, next episode. All right, sorry. I'm really sorry. I am. I thought we would do it all today. I'm so sorry. I'll see you tomorrow, though. Um, once again, this has been Phoenix Wright, A's attorney. My name is Anna Mordahl, and thank you so much for not being frustrated with me. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Bye-bye.